Hey guys, welcome back to Jason and Joni Builds. We are in the shop today prepping our front end, the rear end, the bumpers, uh, all for paint. So, Joni says it's my uh, OCD that uh, I'm doing what I'm doing, but it's when you go to a car show, or you, if you've ever been to a car show with something you built, to me it's not about the, the build that you have there, or it is, but what I'm saying, the, it's not the car as a whole, but it's those certain details that you really spent time on or, or little aspects of the build that um, a true builder would notice. Because anybody can see a car and they can see paint, but uh, just subtle, subtle things that you do. And, and one of the things is, is I like having my, the chassis underneath cleaned up, you know, painted nice and, you know, try not to just cover stuff up, you know, make it look nice. And so she's laughing because one of the things I, I want to do is these housings have got a lot of pitting, just rust from over the years, the old original uh, housings. I don't know how well this comes up on the, on the video. Okay, yeah, I can see it. But that, that kind of pitting, to me, will somebody pay attention to it? Maybe, maybe not. But a true builder will get down there and say, man, you spent some time. And so I'll just show you how I do that. It's not a hard thing. It's not um, by me covering up those pits. It's not, uh, I'm not hiding anything. I'm just, it's been sandblasted. Everything was brought back to uh, clean metal or bare metal. Then we uh, primed it with a metal lock. Now we're about to start sanding on the metal lock. I just have some 80 grit. Uh, we're we're going to go pretty coarse to start with. 80 grit sandpaper and what we're going to do is we're going to sand down until we start seeing the metal shine through and we're going to let that metal lock uh, kind of act as a filler and then we'll just we'll go over the whole rear end that way and then we're going to prime it with uh, 2k we'll prime it real heavy and then i'll probably sand it one more time before i paint it black so what that's doing is the 2k and the metal lock is actually used as a filler to fill all these little imperfections and the holes in the front and rear end. And another thing, uh, Ford was really bad with, um, I'm not sure if they used machines to weld or whatever it was, but uh, show them right here, Johnny. You can tell when they welded the end caps on like the rear end, it had a long piece of slag here. And to me, it, it looked like it was, uh, it wasn't even connected. So I just took a screwdriver and knocked it up under the edge of it and sure enough it was just hanging there it was just basically slag and you could tell where the sandblaster didn't get it so i'll come back and i'll sand that real good but uh we'll take wheels and we'll clean up some of these welds i'm not gonna make them look perfect because Joni will <laughs> she'll run out of here but you know so this is what we're trying to get is just kind of smooth this stuff out you see here's another side but you can tell that's where the weld stopped. You know, the machine, this thing must have been spinning. And then you tell a little porosity and then it, it just carried out. Basically, probably the machine lifted. But in the same spot on both sides of the rear end. So it's little things like that that I'm going to work on today. Get this thing sanded. So the next time we have a pretty day, we can go ahead and black this stuff out. The chassis. Uh, I guess we talked about before, we have, I've already uh, sanded it, did this same process to it. It has the uh, metal lock on, on the first coat after sandblast, and that's 2K primer sitting on it now. And uh, if you look at it close, you can see it's starting to really, really look nice and slick, like the frame did back in 66. You know, so you see just a little bit of pit near where, but I can still sand this one more time. But you don't sand it until you're ready to paint because with 2K primer, I think there's a, there's a short window before you have to sand it again. So sand it, then prime it again or paint it. So I'm not gonna sand this until I'm ready to paint, but it's good to go. And a little trick, Last thing when I get started, you guys might notice is when I when I blasted it, I made sure I covered my VIN 
and I don't want to keep laying uh, 2K primer on top of it. What I'll do is that'll just get black paint. And the same thing here, here's my other VIN. That's stamped twice on the frame, so basically I kept that stuff uh, without any primer on it because what you're doing is you're feeling it. If you sand it, your VIN number will be gone. Anyways, uh, so that's my process. Let's start sanding. sanding. Okay. What I'm talking about. Alright, see that Johnny? So now the metal's coming through. You don't want to keep sanding and sand all the primer out of the pits. You want to leave it. So when that metal starts showing like that, we're good. So I'm going to go all the way around the whole rear end like that. And then we'll, uh, set, we'll put the primer on it by the end of the day. So I just want to show you guys this area too. This is the bottom of the of the rear end. So you can see kind of how pitted all that is. Again, that's just from years of Florida life. This thing was from Florida. Ugh. You see Johnny how it starts kind of laying down, starts kind of getting flat. Mm -hmm. Uh, the more I do that, when that primer gets in all these little crevices, it'll look nice. Whatever you say. <laughs> she doesn't agree with this. I don't say that she doesn't agree with it. She doesn't like this process because she knows I'm picky. I just know this takes forever. <laughs> So if we don't make it to the April show, this is why. <laughs> we can take it pieces. I know, we've done that too. Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> what she's talking about is we took a we took a Mustang I was restoring to a show. For three and, years. Yeah, huh? For three years. Uh, I've been restoring for three years. We were shooting for this show and uh, we were doing all we could do. I was working every night on it, working to midnight. Enlisted some friends, had um, Alan Doral and uh, several other guys come over all along, give me a hand. And we uh, ended up, it was Eleanor. Uh, we were building a, a 67 Mustang GT500 Eleanor. Uh, I know there's no such thing as a, a GT500 Eleanor, but from the movie, GT500. Had a 428 Cobra Jet, uh, two four barrels. I won't stand while I talk. Sorry. <laughs> two four barrels, uh, four speed top loader. It looked really nice. Painted, all the interior was done. We just didn't have time to get it to paint. And then I was talked into uh, putting it in a uh, flat black sealer and we took it to the show that way and actually made a uh, made a magazine. They uh, did a four page cover of our car. It uh, basically it was like, it wasn't a centerfold, but that's what it was like. You open it up, I'll show a picture. We'll take a picture and put it on the screen. But uh, really neat. Uh, that was one of the coolest things that we'd ever accomplished. We, uh, I drove the car the first time at the car show. When we say we took it in pieces, it basically took it in pieces. Johnny was helping me bolt on door handles and uh, chrome in the inside of the car when we got there. But I backed it off the trailer and the car was so pigeon-toed. I don't know if you guys have ever driven, uh, driven. If you've ever driven a car pigeon-toed, got, got off the trailer and tried, they wouldn't let us park at the show. We had to park around the other side of this mall. So I'm driving it around the mall, and it's about to hit the curb here. It's about to hit the car that's on because <laughs> the car wanted to drive in both directions, but, but I, it, I hadn't uh, had it aligned yet. But that was such a big day. Oh, we had to leave and get gas. Yes, because I didn't even have enough gas to make it around the mall. <laughs> so we got there. We found out we couldn't. We couldn't just back up to the to the spot. 
So we left, went and put gas in it, come back. But uh, such a neat day. You know, me and Joni just had a ball. We talked three days straight. She stole the show. She did. Uh, so that was 2004. We were the we were the first Eleanor in the Southeast. Uh, well, there was one other that I had I'd known of, but no other. Our car was uh, authentic. We had the certificate of authenticity. But uh, really neat. It was a special time in our lives and uh, had a great show. But uh, anyways, it's, it's the little details like this that take up more time, but... Um, not that I'm going for pure show winner on this one, but uh, I'm picky and I want it my way and make it nice. And we've already got mosquitoes in January. Jeez. So, all right, back to this. You done yet? Nope. I have. I got the, the tubes, and I gotta do the back, and then I'll stay in the front. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it is, takes time. I think she's about to get, about to leave. <laughs> <laughs> she probably had all she wanted. But now this is kind of funny. She was teasing me because uh, a guy that uh, I work with at one of the paper mills I, I go to, he, uh, we were talking about the channel one day, and he looked it up and just saw one of the thumbnails or something. He said, man, look at you all propped up. No, uh, he said, look at you all propped up there like Paw Paw. <laughs> so, so Joni's uh, always teasing me, you know, story time with Paw Paw, because uh, <laughs> I tend to get ta I tend to get long-winded out here sometimes, and I don't know, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> So anything, anytime that I get to talking, she'll all, all right, Paw Paw. So uh, I'm not a granddaddy yet. But uh, uh, anyways, so see the title? <laughs> That's why. Story time with Paw Paw. That come from uh, just somebody that saw a thumbnail and he said, me, actually, it was this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess it was a thumbnail me doing this. He said, man, you propped up there like Paw Paw. So anyways. That's where the, the headline comes from. And guys, I'm not, you know, worried so much about scratches again because it's getting fill primer. I'm just trying to make sure that I cover everything and get it and get the the base scratched well, so the the primer will bite. Still sanding, getting the, the front end done. We've got the rear end done and I need to do the, the backing plates for the rear end. I need to sand those because they sort of got the same pitting. So as soon as I get this one, this one done, I'll get the backing plates and I'll get everything home so I can paint it, we'll prep it, and put some paint on it. And this is the backing plates that I need to get sanded up. I'm going to show you, you know, again, they're kind of pitted from years of being in the Florida sand where Joni wants to be right now. Oh, yes. So, so if you look outside, it's just gray and blue. At least it's not cold. Well, not today. Uh -huh. We can go through all four seasons in one week. Yep. See all that shows? That's what we're trying to, trying to cover. Alright, I'll let you get out of the dust for a little while. Thank you. Alright, so I have everything hung. Yeah, it's a little chintzy, but uh, it's nice when you have a lift. You can just get this stuff suspended. I've got it all wiped down. Uh, what I was using after I got done sanding it, blow all the dust off, was this Auto Coat Final Clean. 
So we'll make sure I wiped all this down really good, make sure there's no grease on it. We can get some primer put on these things. Here's the backing plates. They're sanded and wiped down. So I am ready to put the primer on and be done for the day. Hey guys, this is the primer that I use. Uh, Nason Select Prime. I've had real good luck with it in the past. It, it sands real nice. Lays down really good. The gun I'm using, my primer gun, it's got a 1.8 tip in it. So it, it sprays this, this primer so much better. Uh, thanks to Brian Berry, he uh, suggested last time I talked to him to uh, open that tip up and uh, I did and man it works so much better. Anyways, uh, let's get some primer on this thing. Alright, here is the primer on the rear end. It looks so much better now. Uh, you can see where we had all the rust divots before. And now that we have got that sanded, got that metal lock sanded, and we have the 2K on it, it's just looking so much better. You can still see some of it, but you know, it doesn't, it won't go away on the first try, but Let's see if I can zoom in. You can kind of see it there. But I put it on nice and heavy, so next time I sand it, the rest of that should go away. And then we can put the black paint on it. Same thing with the front end. It just looks so much better. And lastly, the backing plates. You can tell they look better and again if I really zoom in you can see the pits anyways that will sand off and I think we'll be in good shape next time get these things painted hey guys thanks for tuning in today and follow me on this Bronco project uh, we're making really good progress it's uh, sometimes it seems like I'm moving at a turtle's pace but uh, we're doing the best we can with the time we have and uh, we appreciate you and uh, thank you for continuing to come back to see us. So uh, remember you can email us anytime at jasonjoneybuilds at gmail.com and if you have questions or anything just uh, drop us a line. So uh, till next time you guys stay motivated and we will see you on the next one. You guys take care. Bye.